Hi there, this is Elaine. Today's story is called The Alien Who Couldn't Sleep. And there are two parts to this story, and this is part one. So, a warm welcome to you today. But before we begin, we're going to start by relaxing and calming both your mind and your body. And if you've listened to me before, you know exactly how we're going to do this. So the first thing, get yourself really, really comfortable. Make sure your pillow is fluffed up and is supporting your head. Pull the covers up. Just get yourself as comfortable as you can. And now what I want you to do is take a nice deep breath in like this. And then blow out like this. Alright, do it with me now. Breathe in like this. Out like this. Okay, you do it by yourself now. Breathe in. Out. In. a moment and just notice how your body feels now. Does it feel a little more relaxed than it did just a few moments ago? Maybe you're sinking just a little more into the bed. And what about your mind? Do you feel just a little calmer than you did before? How about one last deep breath in like this and blow out like this? So are you ready for the story? Where am I? said Cosmo to himself. He picked himself up off the ground, stretched his furry soft blue body, opened his big beady eyes, sorted his horns. And as he looked around he could see green spiky stuff on the ground and brown, tall growths that seem to come from the ground and into the air and branch out like they've got limbs. They were so weird, he thought. And many of them have green shapes all around them. He noticed these green shapes moving in the breeze. How strange, thought Cosmo. He also notices as he looks around that there are other strange things like different coloured shapes. Also moving in the wind, connecting to the green spiky stuff on the ground and they've got multicoloured heads and little insects are playing inside them. This is so strange, he thought. And then he noticed. Ah, <laughs> oh, the 
It's a nice smell coming from these colourful things, whatever they are. And that made him feel good. But, but Cosmo knew that he was on a different planet. I mean, I mean, everything here was different. Everything here was strange and weird. How did he get here? And what was this place? So he picked himself up and started walking along looking at all this strange stuff when a pretty little object flew in front of him. It was quite pretty, had wings that fluttered and as he watched she wondered what this strange little creature was all about. This little creature landed on one of the brown limb-like things and looked straight into one of Cosmo's eyes and said, Are you an alien? Cosmo looked around and said, are, are, you, are you talking to me? Of course I am, said the butterfly. I don't think you're from around here, she said, because you look very strange. Well, I guess so, I must have come from somewhere else, said Cosmo, because I haven't seen anything like this place before either. So yes, maybe, maybe I'm an alien then. My name is Tabitha, and I'm kind of in charge of all the butterflies around here. We have a very nice life. We fly around landing on flowers and plants and... So what's your name? And what are you doing here? She said. My name is Cosmo and I don't know what I'm doing here, he said. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering how I can get back to my own planet and even where that is. Well, said Tabitha, until that happens you should come with me. You can have something to eat and a place to sleep for the night. Eat? Sleep? said Cosmo, what's that? Come, said Tabitha. I'll show you. So the cute blue fluffy alien with the big sad eyes and little horns followed Tabitha into the forest. The other animals watched this strange creature Not sure whether they should be feeling scared or not, but he didn't look too dangerous. Cosmo just walked across the path, following Tabitha. Little jump here, little skip there. stopped, looked around, and she waited for him on the petal of a yellow sunflower. Eventually they get to the place where Tabitha and all her friends and family live. And there are butterflies everywhere. Sit down, Cosmo, she said. What would you like to eat? Eat, he said. What's that? You know, food that you put in your body to make you strong and to grow big. I, I don't eat, he said. What? Never? Well, 
You see, we drink a yellow drink called Jadenta, said Cosmo. And I drink that to help my fur stay fluffy and I have these big yellow teeth. And he gives a big smile, see? As he grins at Tabitha. Yes, you have got very yellow teeth, she said, laughing. She liked this alien. Jadenta, said Tabitha. I don't think we've got any of that here. It doesn't taste great, said Cosmo, but it's what we all drink and Rodrion. Is that the name of your planet, said Tabitha? Rodrion? Yes, said Cosmo. It's a beautiful planet. Everything there is purple and white. And all the Rodrians are blue and furry, just like me. Tabitha could imagine how pretty this planet would look with all these fluffy little blue Rodrians running around. Now it was getting dark and Tabitha created a little bed for Cosmo to sleep. In you get Cosmo, said Tabitha. What for? said Cosmo. So she can sleep, she replied. I don't sleep, he said, with one of his eyes twitching. What's the point in sleep, he said. It's the time we use to recharge our energy, said Tabitha. It's where our body heals itself and all our thoughts get put into the right places in our heads. Most people here need to sleep seven to ten hours every single night and it's really important to humans. Really? said Cosmo. That seems like a lot. Yes, when the sun goes down and the sky turns black and the stars come out, we all go to sleep said Tabitha. Tabitha said goodnight to Cosmo and she pulled up the covers and crawled into her little butterfly bed. One big yawn and she was fast asleep. <sighs> Cosmo just lay there looking at the stars above and wondering which one was Rodrion. Where in the sky was it? Because there were so many planets, so many stars. He was lost. He didn't even know how he got here. What about his family, his friends? He felt very sad. didn't want to stay in this strange place. Tabitha was nice and friendly, but this was not his home. So all night he tossed and turned on this little bed that Tabitha had given him. Listening to the funny noises are mm, 
breath here and a, a little snore there. These are very strange people, Cosmo thought to himself. the sun came up and wondered if he would have to do this every night. And when would he be able to go home? The next day it was very warm and Cosmo was a little uncomfortable. You see, in Rodrion, the sun was not very warm. It wasn't cold, but it certainly wasn't warm like this place. And all his people had warm, fluffy coats on, so they didn't need the warmth from the sun. They were already warm. And Cosmo was realising that his blue, furry body was not made for the heat. And he just lay around all day with his eyes open, just watching everything in this funny planet. It was all so weird, he thought. He was resting. Tabatha and the other butterflies went exploring, leaving Cosmo to rest. And after what seemed like days and nights, Cosmo was finding that he was actually getting tired in this strange hot place. and was experiencing yawns like the other animals, and a strange tiredness. This was very unusual for him, but he couldn't help it. His eyes were starting to become a bit drowsy, a bit, a bit heavy. Every time one eye closed, he jumped and tried to open it again, but soon both eyes were closed. Cosmo's body was very relaxed and as he felt the sun go down again and it was getting dark, He just let himself go into the first sleep he had ever had. It must be the atmosphere, he said to himself, as he started to drift off. And if you have also started to drift off, then say good night because like Cosmo sometimes you just have to sleep so tired so dreamy so sleepy and maybe you can hear Cosmo making those little Mm, sounds. Mm. Maybe you can hear Tabitha and the butterflies. Mm. Everyone is so sleepy now. Everyone 
is so tired, dreamy, night night.